Everybody loves Mickey Mouse, but do you know how Mickey got started? Well, he was just a poor little guy when producer Walt Disney cast him to star in the short film Steamboat Willie. The cartoon was an instant sensation. Mickey Mouse became a superstar overnight and famous around the world. With his success, Mickey began to eat regularly and started working out. As a result, his appearance changed slightly, he put on a little weight, and began to dress better. Mickey grew into a talented actor, able to play many different roles, from comedy to dangerous adventures. But whatever the role, Mickey has always stayed the same cheerful, warm-hearted, and humble little guy we've all grown to love. Wouldn't it be fun to learn how to draw, Mickey? Click on one of the steps to learn how to draw Mickey. You can get dizzy going around in circles. You can also draw Mickey's ears that way. Actually, the circles that become Mickey's ears are not perfectly round. They are a little squashed, like somebody stepped on them. Mickey's ears are tricky, so you may want to practice drawing them a little more. Now that we've got our ears, do you want to hear a secret? Mickey's ears don't turn, even when his head turns. They always look flat. Watch! Now Mickey can start to become the friendly little guy we know. Use the axis lines to place Mickey's two eyes. Big, tall ovals. Then small pupils inside. Now he can see you. Draw this curved line under his eyes and you get Mickey's snout. Mickey knows you want him to have a nose. And there it is. Since Mickey is such a happy fellow, Let's put his grin in with this curved line. Below this upper lip, add sort of a wide U shape. Inside the mouth, a shape like the letter M becomes a tongue. See, you've made him smile. You're going to see that as Mickey's face moves, his different features change size and shape. Most of us only wear a mask when we dress up in a costume, but Mickey wears a mask all the time. Follow the shape around the eyes to create a rounded M shape for Mickey's mask. This outlines his face. Add some cheeks above the axis line. 
Do this by rounding the corners of Mickey's smile. Think of what one spaghetti noodle looks like. That's a shape like Mickey's arms and legs. The arm tubes connect at the top sides of the body, or torso. The legs at the bottom. It's easier if you don't draw the hands and feet all at once. For now, let's make ovals and circles to locate where the hands and feet will be. Let's give Mickey a big hand. Uh, no, no, I mean let's draw Mickey's hands, which are kind of big. Draw three plump fingers and a thumb around the pads for the hands. Now, being a proper gentleman mouse, Mickey always wears gloves. So we want to be sure to put cuffs on the gloves. Mickey doesn't usually walk around barefoot or even mouse foot. He wears big oversized shoes. Add cuffs around the ankles and finally a crease line to show where the shoes bend. Since Mickey is an easygoing, simple guy, his favorite thing to wear is just a simple pair of shorts. Mickey's shorts are snug around his belly with wide pant legs. On the front are just two oval buttons. No tail about Mickey would be complete without a tail. There. If you watch closely, sometimes Mickey's tail helps express his emotions. A common mistake is trying to draw Mickey's pear-shaped body all at once. It's best to think of drawings as different shapes put together. Start with a little ball for his belly. Then follow the line of action and curve lines upward into a pear shape. We all know brave little Mickey will stick his neck out for anyone. But look, he doesn't have one. Here's a surprise. Even though Mickey is an all-around guy, we start drawing him with a line. This curved body line helps tell Mickey how to stand. We call it the line of action. Now Mickey can start getting round because he's made up of round shapes and his head is one of them. Try drawing a circle, lightly at first. Keep your strokes loose and easy. To make this flat circle look like a round ball, just add slightly bent lines down the center and across the ball. These are axis lines, and they help locate Mickey's eyes. When Mickey's head moves, they move. Oh boy, doesn't he look swell. Congratulations. You've taken all these shapes and lines and created the bright, happy little guy known as Mickey Mouse. Oops. Well, we know he doesn't give up easy. Hey, Mickey, keep trying. And like Mickey, I hope you'll keep trying to draw. It'll be easier and you'll get better each time. From their first appearance together in the short film Steamboat Willie, Mickey's sweetheart has always been Minnie Mouse. It's easy to see why Mickey found Minnie so charming. She's a bright, energetic, and talented co-star. In the series of films she made with Mickey, perhaps the first mini-series, they became one of the world's most beloved and popular screen teams. In addition to her love of adventure, Minnie was also given roles where she could display her kind and gentle nature. She's a friend to everyone and to all creatures. It's fun to draw Minnie Mouse. 
find out how to draw a mini, just click on one of the steps. Minnie has beautiful eyes. So let's see them. The bottom of each oval should touch the other axis line. Notice that the eye that is furthest away from us appears smaller. Sometimes, to use her feminine charm, Minnie bats her eyelashes, so we better give her some. Each eye has three lashes. Her middle lash line is a bit longer than the other two. We can't leave Minnie's snout out. It's going to hold her nose. Use the axis lines to start a line that arcs out, then comes back to the corner of her mouth. Minnie's snout tilts up just a bit so that we can add her oval-shaped nose. When Minnie smiles, she makes me smile too. In this sideways view, the line for Minnie's lower lip extends outside the circle of her head. Minnie doesn't have any eyebrows, but she does have a shape around her eyes that acts like eyebrows. This shape we call the mask. See how the mask follows the shape of Minnie's eyes, only bigger. Her mask not only outlines her face, it changes shape to help show how Minnie is feeling. Minnie likes to dance cheek to cheek with Mickey. So we'd better add round, happy cheeks to finish the mask. This part of the mask outlines her smile, just like the top part of the mask outlines her eyes. Like Mickey, Minnie's ears are circles that are a little flattened or squashed. In this sideways view, notice how the ears tilt back on Minnie's head. Watch how Minnie's ears stay flat and just rock back and forth on her head when it turns. Gosh, Minnie doesn't have a leg to stand on. We better help her with these two little legs. They connect with the lower ball of the body. Her knees are bent because of the way she's standing. Ovals will indicate where her shoes will be. They are tipped up at an angle because she is leaning forward. Minnie's arms are tube-shaped and connect on the upper body. The Minnie we are drawing is holding something, so sketch circles for her hands until we find out what it is. Now don't let those little arms fool you. They're strong. Minnie's hands have one, two, three fingers and a thumb. Big hands, huh? And they look even bigger because they're inside of gloves. Just three lines for the stitching, a circle for a cuff, and you have Minnie's glove. Now let's draw her hands for our pose. One hand is palm down, so here's the stitching on the back of the glove. And the other hand is palm up, so we can see the fingers and the thumb across those fingers. Minnie believes you can't have too many shoes, and here's the kind of shoes she looks for. Her shoes are wide and round, and the toes come to a rounded point. Now let's watch how she kicks up those heels. You can't always see Minnie's tail, but if we add it here, it will help her balance. It also helps express her feelings. Minnie is a no-nonsense kind of gal, and so her dresses are usually simple, although very becoming. Her skirt hem is a little above her knees and is drawn with a smooth line. Her blouse sleeves should not be too puffy. Her bow is soft and large. It often flops forward or backwards when she moves. Watch! <music> 
We're going to draw a mini standing sideways. This curved line helps us figure out how her figure is going to look. The line of action, as it's called, sort of acts like a skeleton for our drawing. Since Minnie is always on top of things, we'll draw her head. Use the line of action to determine where to put the first circle. And if we draw these curving lines on the flat circle, it starts to look like an actual ball. These are called axis lines. They are important because they will help guide us where to put Minnie's eyes and nose. Already they tell us that Minnie is going to be looking toward the right side of the screen. Minnie's body is kind of pear-shaped, which means it's a little bigger on the bottom than on top. To help draw her body, first draw a ball. Then extend lines upward for the upper body, where it will meet with her head. That's it. She's fishing. Oops. Looks like the fish has caught Minnie by surprise. So who's catching who here, huh? Now you can see that when we put all the little lines and ovals and circles together, we can create magical drawings that come to life. Like Minnie, keep practicing. Daisy first tried to woo Donald Duck's heart in 1937, playing a fiery temptress named Donna in the cartoon Don Donald. She proved once and for all that Donald Duck had finally met his match. Daisy is a strong-willed, outspoken, independent lady in her own right. Learning to draw Daisy is as easy as rolling water off a duck's back. Now to draw Daisy, just click on one of the steps. Daisy is a big flirt and she can use her eyes to charm Donald. They are oval shaped and slant toward each other slightly at the bottom. Inside her eyes are big pupils. Daisy's eyes have three eyelashes. They begin in the middle of each eyelid and extend across toward the outer edges. Above her eyes, give Daisy eyebrows. These simply follow the shape of her eyes. Wow, how can we resist her? Daisy can be a smooth talker, so start drawing her mouth, or Bill in her case, since she's a duck, with a curved line under her eyes. And being a daintier duck than Donald, her bill is much shorter. Her lower bill is also short and squared off. Since her mouth is open here, we can see her tongue. It's just a small V shape in the center of her lower bill. Daisy has some figure. You can help her keep her shape by drawing two ovals. A smaller one goes on top and below it a larger one is slightly off to the side. Enclose these ovals with a line giving a pronounced curve to her back. Daisy's tail is a soft little tuft of feathers. It's kind of triangle shaped at the back end of her torso and it follows the upward curve of the bottom oval. Create a kind of wavy line of feathers under the bottom of her torso. Looks a little like a dress, doesn't it? That's the idea. Draw Daisy's neck as a short tube connected to the upper oval. It is wider at the bottom, giving her a neckline that looks fabulous with a string of pearls. If anyone can make tube-like legs look attractive, it's certainly Daisy Duck. For now, just sketch loose ovals for her feet. Here's a chance for Daisy to show off her slender arms. 
Draw Daisy's arms, outstretched and tube-shaped. They curve and are a little long. Sketch some ovals at the ends for hand placement. Now let's see those limbs spring into action. Daisy's hands have four fingers. They are slender and thinner at the tips. But this hand is making a fist. Let's draw the other hand open. These look comfortable for Daisy. Her standard shoes are wide with a pointed toe and large heels. Although Daisy has the figure for high fashion, she also knows the value of simplicity. Her standard outfit is a simple blouse, short sleeves that are slightly puffy, with a tight armband type of cuff. Daisy doesn't hold back when it comes to her bow. She wears it proud and expressively, the way some would wear a hat. Her hairstyle is a simple tuft of feathers turned upwardly, nestled below her bow and above her cheeks. A wrist bracelet is Daisy's other accessory of choice. She's always seen wearing it on her left wrist. The bracelet fits loosely, but make sure that it does hang below her wrist. Good, now she's dressed for success. Daisy Duck often uses her body movements to express how she feels about things. Daisy's line of action is drawn first to help position Daisy's posture and tells us how she's going to move. It acts like a spine going through her entire figure. You can see how different lines of action suggest different poses. Here's one I like. Daisy enjoys being the belle of the ball and her head is drawn round like a ball. Start with a circle. Then let's lightly draw two curving guidelines, one going down the circle and one going across. Artists call these axis lines. These lines are very helpful because they locate the features on her face. Moving the axis lines will move her features to show Daisy's head at different angles. Tennis, anyone? Daisy can sure raise a racket with the best of them. Whoa! Looks like she may have met her match. Well, I hope you'll be just as determined as Daisy when it comes to your draw. Keep practicing. Donald Duck quacked onto the movie scene in 1934 in the cartoon The Wise Little Hen. He hasn't stopped quacking since. Donald's playful nature and quick temper soon made him popular with audiences around the world. Donald also became something of a world traveler, his curiosity taking him on many interesting adventures. Click on any one of the steps and learn how to draw Donald. Donald's eyes are tall oval shapes, like eggs, that sit on the axis line across his head. His pupils are also oval shaped and darkened in. They usually touch the edge of the eyes. Here they are at the bottom corners. Hmm. He appears to be looking down at something. Notice how the eyes are at slight angles and the eye that is furthest away from us is drawn a little smaller? That's all part of how to draw objects that look three-dimensional. Donald doesn't hold back how he feels. His eyebrows help express those moods. The brows are easy. Just follow the shape of the tops of his eyes. It's easy to quack up over Donald's bill. 
It is his most prominent or outstanding feature. The axis line across his face helps locate Donald's bill. The bill is low on his head and squared off in front. The front part is turned up, forming a little ridge that shows thickness. Underneath is the lower bill. It's a bit shorter and more square. The two bills attach on the ball of Donald's head. This forms Donald's cheeks. Here, the upward turn of his bill makes him appear to be happy. You see, contrary to popular belief, Donald doesn't stay mad for very long. Everybody needs a body, so let's give Donald his body. Drawing two ovals along the action line is the key. The bottom one is the larger, and it's on its side. Then the smaller one is above the larger one, and is standing up. Now enclose these two ovals by drawing around them. The shape we have just created for Donald's body is a kidney shape. There, that's good. Now draw three unevenly spaced feathers on his backside and toward the top of the larger oval. That's his tail. Donald wears a bow tie around his neck, so we better give him a neck for it. Make the neck long and tube-shaped. It's slightly thinner toward his body and wider near his head. There. Donald looks like a duck out of water without his sailor shirt, which is his favorite costume. So let's draw it. The sleeves cover up his arms and are wider at the wrists. The collar wraps around his neck and hangs down the back. Put in stripes for cuffs. All sailors can tie a good knot, and so can Donald. A fluffy bow tie rests at the bottom of Donald's neck. You can top off this costume with a sailor hat. Draw a pear-shaped oval with the wide part in front. A ribbon with two points hangs down the back. There's a tuft of feathers in front of his hat as well as on the back of his head. Of course, whenever Donald blows his top, the hat's history. Donald doesn't always wear shoes. Maybe that's why he's so flat-footed. If we make sort of rounded triangles, we get the shape of Donald's feet. At the end of each foot are three toes. The middle toe is slightly larger than the other two. Let me point out that Donald's fingers won't be seen in our pose. So let's draw them separately first. Donald has three fingers and a thumb. His fingers are slender, thinner, and round at the tips, so that they look more feather-like. Now here's a handy look at Donald's hands in this pose. See them? Can you guess what he's doing? I can't tell what it is yet. Donald has arms that are long, slender, tube-like shapes. They're wider at the wrists and narrower near his body. Here they curve downward because Donald is holding something. Hmm. We'll just draw ovals for now to show where his hands are. Yes, he's definitely got something. What do you think it might be? You know, when Donald's angry, he can really kick up a storm. And he does it on short, tiny legs. They connect toward the back of his body. Draw straight, short tube shapes for his legs. Make them wider at the ankles and narrow at his body. Just like yours, Donald's feet connect at ankles at the back of his feet. For now, just sketch them as loose triangle shapes.
Donald certainly has a strong personality. This body line of action helps give him a strong backbone and tells us how he's going to stand. Donald is known to be pretty hot-headed. Did you know that drawing Donald's head starts as a circle? Draw round and round to make a nice round circle. Add curved axis lines. Now the circle becomes a three-dimensional sphere. A sphere is not a flat circle. It's round all around, like a ball. The axis lines also tell us where his eyes and bill will be on his head. We can already start to see that he will be looking down a little. Well, maybe Donald won't get a hole in one this time, but we sure were pros in getting our drawing right. Hey, Donald, relax. You can try again. Try drawing it again and again. And I know your new strokes will be better than Donald's. In 1932, a very different-looking individual named Dippy Dog sat in the audience of Mickey's Review. His popularity encouraged more screen appearances, and soon after, he became known as simply the Goof, and finally, Goofy. A major discovery occurred when the Disney Studios learned of Goofy's fondness for sports. Actually, he was the perfect guy to show how to do everything wrong. Goofy bumbled his way through one athletic film after another, to the delight of audiences everywhere. Yes, Goofy is one of everybody's favorites. Learning how to draw Goofy is easy. Find out how to draw Goofy by clicking on one of the steps. Goofy's oval-shaped eyes are so large, they fill in most of his head in this front view. Draw smaller ovals inside the eyes and darken them in for Goofy's pupils. What a guy! Now with Goofy looking straight on at us like this, we call this the center view or front view, everything is pretty even in size. Watch how things change when we see his head from a different angle. Can you see that Goofy's features closest to us seem to be slightly bigger, while the features that are further away seem smaller? That's because Goofy is not flat. He is round and three-dimensional. We are seeing him in perspective. Goofy has such big, expressive eyes that his eyebrows go outside the head circle. See how they follow the same shape as the tops of his eyes? Goofy has been called hair-brained, but that's not because he has a lot of hair. He has just three hairs. They are curved lines behind his eyebrow. The middle hair is longer. Oh, I almost forgot. You see that funny little knob on the back of his head? We call it a top knot. Goofy, isn't it? Goofy's snout is something to shout about. It's big. It starts at the axis line across his head and it goes, well, like this. Next, give him a nice big olive type of a nose. Mmm. Now, how do you suppose he sees over that nose and snout anyhow? Oh, well, let's move on. Next, make kind of a wide U for a lower jaw and make sure it's tucked well under the snout. This gives him a nice smile. Goofy is the master of the toothy grin. He has two squared off teeth, underneath and at the end of his snout. Some chompers, huh? Looks goofy to me.
puppy has long ear flaps that hang down well past his shoulders. Narrow near his head, they widen to rounded ends. Pluto has similar looking ears, but he can make his ears stand up or bend. Goofy's ears mostly just flop around carelessly, like the goof himself. Because his ears are long and heavy, they pull down a bit on his head, creating little folds of skin. In this pose, Goofy's ears are flapping in the breeze. To provide Goofy with his sporty look, a turtleneck sweater is essential. Of course, finding sweaters long enough in the arms can be a problem. Goofy looks best in a vest. Goofy's trousers are designed to give him plenty of room. Usually his cuffs are well above his ankles. And finally, there's Goofy's hat. As you can see, he wears it jauntily to the side. Sometimes his hat has a hard time keeping up with his head. Our Goofy is on the move, so let's put some action into the drawing of his arms. They are tube-shaped, bending at the elbows. Now make ovals where his hands will be. Drawing long, rubbery tube shapes is a step in the right direction to get Goofy's legs. His pants cover up just how skinny his legs are, but you catch a glimpse of his legs at his ankles. Now sketch big, floppy ovals for each foot. When we put the goof into action, you can see just how goofy all those rubbery arms and legs move. Hands down, Goofy is the winner of the Big Hand Award. His hands are about the same length as his head and snout. He wears gloves with cuffs on them. And what about those feet? Whoa, his shoes are almost as long as his arms. Can you imagine? His shoes are loafers flat on the bottom and turned up a little at the toes. They have a rolled cuff around the ankle and flat heels. Although they don't have shoelaces, Goofy will still manage to trip over them. My parents always told me to stand up straight. Obviously, Goofy didn't have my parents. He always slouches but that's all part of his carefree, relaxed nature. This is how he looks standing up. His body looks tall and lanky, like a long-necked pear. We've given Goofy a line of action that shows he's bent over, so here's how his body is drawn for our action pose. We use a small circle for his chest and a big circle for a round belly. When we connect these circles by drawing a line around them, his body looks ready for action. Oops, we almost forgot. Goofy's neck. We better attach it for him. It's a long, skinny tube, wider at the head and narrow at the body. There, I feel much better. Since Goofy is so athletic, his body movements are very important. The line of action shows the direction of his movement. This pose tells us already that Goofy is leaning forward, like he's swimming or something. Goofy's head circle is sort of small, but that doesn't mean he's small-minded. He's just a little simple-minded. So this part is simple. To create a ball, add axis lines. And 
there he is, folks. Nothing can stop him, not even his own big feet. Well, that's certainly the goofiest dribble I ever saw. But that's the great thing about Goofy. So remember, while you may goof it up sometimes in your drawings, of all of Mickey Mouse's pals, Pluto has been around the longest and is the most faithful. But that friendship didn't begin right away. Our canine hero was discovered in a 1930 picture titled The Chain Gang. This first screen appearance was just a bit part where he was one of two unnamed bloodhounds. In his next movie, The Picnic, this future dog star played the part of Rover. In that story, he seemed to belong to Minnie Mouse and actually gave Mickey a pretty bad time. Next, this lovable hound was teamed alongside Mickey Mouse and a lifelong bond was set. Soon, producer Walt Disney named him Pluto the Pup. Mickey and Pluto have been loyal companions both on and off the screen ever since. But most of the time, he's carefree, lovable, loyal, and just about the best friend anyone could have. Here's your chance to find out how Pluto is drawn. To draw Pluto yourself, click on one of the steps. Pluto is eager and bright-eyed. Let's give him eyes by using the axis lines. The eyes are separated by the vertical axis line, and they sit on top of the axis line across the head. Darken the pupils in the corners, and we can see that something off in the distance has definitely caught Pluto's attention. Give him eyebrows, close above the eyes. Notice they extend outside the head circle. The eyebrows also show us how alert he is. Pluto has a curious little circle behind his head called a top knot. You know one thing dogs do best? They sniff. And Pluto's got one of the best sniffers of them all. Start drawing it right below his eyes. Make a long sort of oval or bean shape. Use an arc line underneath, back to the head circle. Then you put two crease lines on top for wrinkles. This shape makes me think of a hot dog bun. Say, while we're on the subject of food, let's tip it off with an olive shape for a nose. Whenever Pluto isn't carrying anything in his mouth, it's usually open to show how happy he is. Draw a long U shape below the snout arc we've just made. Draw another U to show how thick Pluto's jaw is. Pluto likes to lick the faces of his friends with his long, slobbery tongue. And there it is. Can you wiggle your ears? Pluto can do all sorts of things with his ears. They flop around when he's relaxed. They can even show surprise. For our drawing, they'll show he's ready for action. Pluto is a strong dog with a powerful, proud chest. Start drawing his body by making an egg shape for his chest. His rear end starts as a small circle. These shapes are placed along the line of action. Now draw a line around both shapes and you get Pluto's body. When it comes to trouble, Pluto often sticks his neck out. So draw a tube shape around the upward line of action for his neck. Pluto is built for speed with four fast legs. Getting all these legs drawn at the right length isn't easy. To help us draw them correctly, draw a rectangle under Pluto's body. Think of it as a rug or mat for Pluto to stand on. 
Now draw an oval at each of the four corners of the mat to place Pluto's paws. Great! Now let's erase the mat. We don't need it anymore. Well, now that we know where the paws are, we're ready to give him some legs. His legs are tube-like shapes and bendable. And by the way he's standing, we can tell Pluto is getting ready to run or jump. Time to pause long enough to draw Pluto's paws. His feet lie flat on the ground. Each paw has three stubby toes, with the middle toe just a little bit longer. Pluto doesn't want to be caught by the dog catcher and put in the pound, so we better give him a collar around his neck. The collar is shaped like a ring. And that's the end of that. Doggone it! I almost forgot the most important thing. Pluto's tail! It connects at the end, of course, and sort of continues the line of action. It starts wide and goes out to a point. Pluto uses it to express his point. <laughs> Get the point? Since Pluto is such a playful pooch, let's draw a playful line of action. Even though Pluto is a dog and walks around on all four paws, his line of action still acts like a spine, running through his head and body. With this action line, we've given Pluto a playful little turn of the head. Place a circle for Pluto's head at the top of the curve. Sketch a vertical axis line to show the direction the head will be turned. Sketch a horizontal axis line to show how the head is tilted. In other words, these lines move the head up and down and left and right. Pluto's always ready for a game of fetch, and he seldom misses. Good job, Pluto. And we did pretty good, too. Well, I hope you've caught on how to draw Pluto. Drawing is something you can really sink your teeth into.